Hey guys, we're giving away a Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Edition, along with a Switch OLED, along with a pin from PAX East. We're also on our road to 133,000 subscribers, so I would appreciate it if you just hit that subscribe button. Anyways, you can go enter that giveaway down in the pin comment or in the description, and let's get into the video. All right, guys, Tears of the Kingdom is now 13 days away, at least at the time this video is being recorded and published. Maybe you watch it when it's 12 days, 11, 10, etc. Maybe you're watching this after Tears of the Kingdom comes out. But what I want to talk about today, and, and it's it's less of a new information thing. We do have some new information we could talk about. We have a, a much better piece together map we could be going over. Uh, we have some other screenshots and details that have sort of been out there that we maybe could dive into. But I'm going to save those for another time because obviously, especially when it comes to the map thing, it kind of feels like every day there's new additions to the map. So I want to let the map get completely fleshed out here, at least uh, for another 24 hours before we dive into it. But what I wanted to talk about today is this idea of how important Tears of the Kingdom is, not just to me, but for Nintendo and even the video game industry. And some people might feel like I am overstating this a little bit. It's not like the video game industry crashes without Nintendo and without uh, the Legend of Zelda and stuff like that. Obviously, there is a very healthy gaming industry going on all around us. It's bigger than ever. Mobile phone gaming and tablets are bigger than ever. PC gaming's made a huge comeback, becoming really mainstream. Obviously, we know PlayStation sells 100 million every generation, and their games have been increasing in sales. You know, you got Horizon Forbidden West, probably around 12 or 13 million in sales right now. Major DLC dropping, all that stuff. So, look, the video game industry is in a healthy place. Elden Ring last year, you know, one game of the year, rightfully so. It was, you know, pretty subjectively uh, the, the game of the year. I know I was about to say objectively, but that's not really how that works, right? It's an opinion. So I, I do think that the video game industry is in a great place, and it would be in a great place even without Tears of the Kingdom. But we're also in this place in the video game industry where a lot of weird things are happening. And Tears of the Kingdom is not excluded from some of that weirdness and we'll talk about that but what i want to first look at are, are, are the things that tears of the kingdom you know the timing of this game coming out uh you know playstation's big games like the next spider-man game and final fantasy and all that stuff those are coming later in the year right uh to kick off this year we obviously had fire emblem for us nintendo guys xbox has redfall coming up but then there's been all that negativity around redfall and requiring online connections and not being able to actually progress in the game with your friends, only the host progresses, and just really weird decisions made with that game. And then, yeah, Starfield's supposed to be a big redeemer for Microsoft as well, but again, like Final Fantasy 16 and Spider-Man 2, that stuff is later this year. The beginning of this year has been pretty solid for Nintendo. I mean, arguably great for Nintendo, and we've had other great multi-platform games like Octopath Traveler 2, but... Tears of the Kingdom is coming out at a very interesting point. It's a point of inflection for Nintendo, and I think a point of inflection for the video game industry, because you see, this is the third year of those new generation platforms, PlayStation and Xbox, and literally Sony just put out projections of selling 25 million PlayStation 5s in the uh, current fiscal year, which is utterly amazing and would be an all-time record for PlayStation to sell in a year. I, that's awesome, and I, I'm really happy for Sony and you know the, the people that play on that platform. I have a PlayStation 5, so happy for me. Yay, I'm finally going to get some big games this year I want to play. Heck, there was one game, uh, Hi-Fi Rush, that came out on Xbox, actually. was actually pretty good, too. I, again, I'm not one of these console warriors. I think there's good games on all the platforms. But my thing, in, in talking about when Tears of the Kingdom comes out here, is that the industry sort of needs to be reminded of a few things. One, graphics aren't everything. Two, not everything needs to be 4K 60 FPS to be enjoyable. And I know that seems weird because I would love if Tears of the Kingdom was 4K 60 FPS. It will be day one on emulators. I know, I'm not stupid. We all know that's gonna happen. This game's gonna leak before it comes out and people are gonna already be playing it in 4K and 60 FPS on emulators. We're not stupid. Happens with every search game. But the point is that even without that, running at 900p and 30 FPS with frame rate drops, it's still going to end up being an absolutely incredible experience for tens of millions of people. And the industry sometimes needs 
needs a bit of a gut punch. And sometimes that gut punch comes in, you know, forms that maybe we least expected. Like, yeah, Redfall was supposed to be this big deal. Now there's some worries about it. Now people are saying it doesn't look good enough, which I think is just weird because I still think the game looks pretty good. I don't know what people are expecting at this point. It's a, gamers are all over the place with their expectations. But Zelda's going to walk in here, you know, for the most part at a glance, looking exactly the same as Breath of the Wild uh, from six plus years ago, just from a visual perspective. And still going to end up blowing people's minds because of the creativity of the gameplay. And that is something to me that just gets overstated by other gamers about how much other aspects of a game matter more than the actual gameplay of the game when the gameplay is the core fundamental aspect that we're all interacting with. Now, yes, higher frame rate does lead to smoother gameplay experiences, and I would love for a on Switch 2 for there to be like a 60 FPS mode for Tears of the Kingdom, but my point is that even without that, the gameplay ends up being so, fundamental, so fundamentally enjoyable that... It's just beyond anything that people, you know, think. We talked about when they unveiled that little 10-minute gameplay segment of the Fuse and the Ultra Hand and Ascend and all this, how there were game developers out there being like, hey, man, you're, Nintendo's out here just making us look bad. Like, they are doing things and ideas with their games that are crazy. And even all those nuts and bolts comparisons with Ultra Hand, oh, we've had building before, look at nuts and bolts. And now that media have gone hand on, they're kind of like, you can't compare this to nuts and bolts. It's so far beyond, you know, even the, um, e even the, the remote gameplay of nuts and bolts, let alone just the possibilities of Ultra Hand are so far beyond it that it's just not even a fair comparison. There really isn't a game that compares to it. I know my, my dear friend, uh, you know, Player Essence, he put out there the other day that it, it's sort of like a Minecraft. Like, you have this all this creativity and imagination, and that has helped Minecraft be like this forever game. And there is a little bit of that here, but in a completely different way, like completely unique. I do think that Nintendo is reminding the world in the moment of what matters, and what matters is fun. And I, I think we sometimes forget that that is an important aspect in all of our lives. Um, I, I don't mean to get too philosophical or life lesson-y on you guys. But man, I'm a parent of three. Um, I'm a YouTuber for a living at the moment. Thank you, by the way, for enabling me to do that. Uh, you guys really, you know, subscribing and supporting over the last four and a half months uh, have really, you know, solidified me doing this full time. So thank you. But... Between making all this content, making multiple videos a day, and the live streams, and, and, and the saving up to do the giveaways we're doing, and all that other stuff that, that just happens in life, family things, and, you know, bills, and you know, drama from certain aspects of, of, of things, look, in all of this, and, and this is before talking about, like, personal things, like depression and all that, what matters as I get older, because I turned 37 this year, is I, I don't want to forget what fun feels like. Fun makes life worth living. Let's just be frank. As we get older, some of us forget to have fun. We're too focused on, we have to do the next thing. We have to do the next thing. We have our next goal. Example, 133,000 subscribers. If I was solely focused on getting to 133,000 subscribers, I might forget to have fun along the way when I'm doing this. like Part of the reason I wanted to be a full-time YouTuber was I enjoy it. And what happens if I get so focused on growth, I stop enjoying what I'm doing, right? I want to make sure along the way that we're having fun, that I'm having fun. And what's so cool about Nintendo, and, and this is maybe the one thing that for any criticism Nintendo deserves, I give them credit for, is they somehow every year seem to release at least one game that reminds me that fun is more important than anything else. And we all have fun in different ways. But I love a visual feast game. I love games that look gorgeous. I love games that run at high frame rates and, uh, and all that. But there's a reason every now and then I still turn World of Warcraft back on. There's a reason I really enjoy Mario Odyssey. There's a reason that I play these games, that I play a wide variety because I like to have fun. I, I sometimes get tired of the conversations in gaming that lead to really singular focused things like, oh, if it's less than 60 FPS or it has frame rate dips like we talked about yesterday, oh, the game sucks. And meanwhile, I'm smiling. 
I'm laughing. I, you know, I, I'm when I make some crazy contraption in Tears of the Kingdom and it crashes and burns and my character goes flying and my stamina runs out and I kill myself. I'm gonna be laughing and having a ball and gonna have all these live stream experiences with you guys that are just gonna make me smile. And all of this is thanks to Tears of the Kingdom coming right now at a time that I think gaming needs a reminder of what fun is. And one of the reasons that Tears of the Kingdom is likely going to win Game of the Year this year, even with Final Fantasy 16 and Starfield and other major games coming out, is because it's going to be the one game that goes, yeah, you can have your super serious story, your amazingly in-depth combat trees and progression and all of this stuff, and that might be fun to an extent. But then there's the kind of fun where you're just smiling a lot. And when I watch people play Final Fantasy 16 and uh, you know, other Final Fantasy games, I suppose. I don't see them smiling a lot during their live streams. They're really focused. They're really determined. And that's good. That's a, 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 a type of enjoyment, right? Like, there are serious movies we watch where we're not laughing, but we're still being entertained. But I think it's nice to be reminded that it's okay to just laugh and smile and have fun. And that doesn't mean there won't be serious and dark moments in Tears of the Kingdom. Of course there will. But along the way, along the journey... I think we're just going to have a lot of fun. And I want to thank Nintendo for kind of reminding me and maybe the rest of the world that maybe this is just what some of us need. Maybe I'm off base. Maybe I'm just babbling to the wind and nobody cares. But I think heavily that Tears of the Kingdom is coming exactly at least when I need it. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you feel like me? Do you think this is just a bunch of nonsense? I don't know. These are just the thoughts running across my mind today as you know we just inch closer and closer to Tears of the Kingdom being here. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.